Uh, so welcome to, I uh, know what our title of our talk is, the five W's and H of open source community. I wrote the abstract and the title and I don't remember it. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, if you don't know, my name is Laura LaRusso. I am the outreach chair for the CDF. I'm a CNCF ambassador, head of community at Fracona, and just all around people person. Jeremy? I, I'm Jeremy Meese. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> that was quite the segue. Uh, I am Jeremy Meese. Uh, I am a uh, DevX consultant and DevRel stuff. And yeah, I've been on the working with CDF, a uh, variety of things, program chairs and uh, speaker and contribute community stuff and all that for the last few years. So that's me. So this is actually the, the, the W that's the who? Just uh, for everybody walking in, and since I forgot to mention that beforehand, so it's five W's and H, so we're hitting the we're hitting the who. Anisha, oh, you should you don't have a mic? No. Oh, no, I thought we had an extra. Okay, keep going. Hey, hey everyone, I'm Anisha Vallabhaneni. I'm the director of cloud and platform engineering at Fidelity Investments. Uh, we are an active contributors of open source projects and also a strong supporter of CDF in terms of the CD events, Jenkins projects, and so on. So it's very close to me. Thank you. Um, my name is Andrea Frittoli. I'm uh, a developer, advocate, and software engineer uh, at IBM. And I've been around open source now for more than 10 years going through different communities with OpenStack and the great CDF community now. At the CDF, I serve as a chair for the TOC and I'm a member of the governing board. And I'm a maintainer of a couple of projects, Tecton and City Events. Yes, so that's the who. So when we start discussing the other Ws and H, you kind of get a little idea of where we all came from and why our answers might be the way they are. So we all know everyone comes to open source with different paths, but those are ours. So we're gonna start with the what. So Anisha, what are the benefits and challenges of participating in open source? Sure, so one of the major benefit that we have realized is the invaluable learning opportunity that we get from the open source communities. We have an opportunity to start learning from other experienced contributors. So if an engineer wants to learn a specific programming language, uh, say Golang, they can just start with an open source project. They will learn the whole code review process, how to go about navigating and understanding some of the uh, different technologies out there. So building that collaborative culture, and you will bring it back to your organization eventually. I think that is one of the greatest benefit the companies can have eventually. It's not just the personal growth of the individual, they bring it back and start contributing more and foster towards the innovation of the company. But when it comes to challenges, and I this is where we all wanna know, this is challenges, right? How do we overcome these? What are the challenges? Exactly. So it's similar. It's along similar lines. So I would say it's along the steep learning curve for the open source projects. We all understand open source projects are complex and they're huge code bases. So it's very difficult for someone who is new to go in and start contributing. So that's where the communities come into picture. You need a mentor who can support you to navigate through this process. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you should start with something small. So I think having a mentor, starting small, is one way we can address this challenge. Does anyone else wanna jump in? Yeah, I'll take, uh, I think those are, I think, yeah, I totally agree. I think there's, um, I think the other side of it is when we think about um, the, the challenge of uh, setting roadmaps, I think is is an important one too when we think about like where where it is now and where are we going to go with the project uh both whether it's a, a company that's that's supporting it or a company is uh implementing within their their organization uh having a really good set plan of of where you're going with it i think is is something that you don't often see and i think that's a, a challenge we start seeing a lot of companies when they start implementing uh you know some of these projects uh, is they you know they found it they thought it fit with what they're doing and they're not 
interacting with that community and they don't, they're not really aware of what the changes are that might actually affect them. And so I think getting a good roadmap and how you're actually gonna interact and use that uh, is just as important as you know, starting to, to, hey, we're gonna use this new thing that we saw. And I'm gonna make it a little personal. So for me, one of the biggest benefits of an open source community is that they help lift you up. So I was on a job search for seven months and I was still an active part of the CDF, the Linux Foundation, OpenSF, CNCF, and the people that reached out to me to check in on me, to send me referrals, to see how I was doing, to just like make sure I was involved in program committees that I wasn't falling off the map, like that is a huge benefit. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here today is that I was voluntold to become a part of open source and it is a community that I will never leave because it's so welcoming, it's so open arms. You can find your mentors, you can try to find people to help you find the roadmap. Um, so I think that's one of the benefits. I think the challenge was if I wasn't pushed into it, I wouldn't have done it. So there's kind of the rub, right? Okay, cool. So next up, another W, uh, it is the, oh, the when. I'm so prepared. Um, so <laughs> when conflicts arise within open source communities, what is some way to effectively resolve them? And Andrea, that is for you. Um, right. Well, I, I would say, first of all, I mean, conflict should be uh, civilized. So if things goes beyond code of conduct, that's a different kind of story. And I think maybe we talk about it later in not, another question. <laughs> Um, the other thing I wanted to say about this is it's very important not to leave conflicts unresolved because that leads to uh, people losing interest, leaving the project, the project not evolving, things not happening at the end of the day, right? So it's, and, and because of that, it's very important to have uh, like policies and documentations about, you know, how decisions are taken within the community. But that said, it's not really only about policies. It's a lot about people. And uh, sometimes people come to a community and they want to do something. Um, and maybe that's not OK because it's not vendor neutral. So the community thinks not and that generates conflict. But it's important not to say just no, but you know, try to understand what is your need and you know, what, what do you want to, to achieve and make sure that the community can accommodate for that as much as possible. So, you know, try to understand each other. I think it's very important for conflict resolution. Yeah, I think one of the things that makes open source so special is this idea of consensus. Uh, Pinky and I, we, we did GitOpsCon and I did a talk and I said, I can't even come to consensus with my eight-year-old and I'm her mom, right? Like there shouldn't be consensus, <laughs> like it's my way. Um, but I think, you know, to the point of like conflict discussions is that everyone has a seat at the table, but like you have to come to that overall understanding and maybe somebody has to walk away from the table because it just isn't fitting for them. But that's also the cool thing about open source is that there's tons of other tables to go sit down at. Anyone else? No? I, only thing I might add is uh, when we think about like conflicts and um, especially in like communities, uh, people when they feel strongly, like when there's passion around a thing and, and things might get heated and, and goes on that border of it not being civilized, um, which conflict civilized is, is always a fun little exercise uh, but th there's a reason they're so passionate and I think there are times that it calls for let's dive into it let's see why they're passionate and maybe it is like you said like figure out what are they wanting to uh, you know contribute find out the core core thing um, why are they involved in the community because uh, that can give a big view into how you can actually uh, activate them to potentially be a, a huge benefit to the community instead of, of it being that conflict so really kind of dive into that with them Okay, so now for our next W, can you guys guess which one? No? Okay, cool, it's where. So how can open source communities leverage online and offline spaces to foster a sense of belonging and collaboration? So we are all used to this remote world, so how, like who wants to take this one, the where? How do you make that happen? 
I'm, I'm wow, sure. pass the uh, book, we, guys. Really, we wanted to not have to do this. And actually, my name was on this one. <laughs> I think remember it. Oh, that's we're why very I prepared. I was tell? wondering. Okay. Yeah, I think so. We're very, very Sneaky. prepared on that. Yeah. Um, automated process took that away. <laughs> DevOps automate everything. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think when you think virtual, uh, you know, like there is obviously in person, there's there's this. This is a great way to interact with your community. You got meetups. You have, uh, you know, conferences, other events. You have, you know, just the you know, hey, let's have a hackathon. Like those, those, there's those ways. Uh, but I think some of the other wares uh, are in that virtual space. Um, over the years, we've seen, you know, Slack is not, I'm gonna say it, Slack is not great for open source community. It's not great for communities uh, because everything goes away. You can't, unless you have the money to pay thousands and thousands of dollars and nobody really does, especially the community side. So it's, you know, finding those spaces that you can, you can have those communication. Um, back in the, uh, back in the day, and I guess sometimes still, the mailing list was a great way to do it uh, because then you could, everybody that's on there gets to see it and everybody can contribute. Uh, finding those spaces, uh, you know, things like Discord uh, is great. If you have a forum that you're able to kind of spin up, uh, GitHub uh, with GitHub discussions is a great way to kind of build community and you can do a lot through that, get a lot more interaction. I think utilizing those technical spaces uh, has been a whole, become a whole lot more um, resourceful than it was uh, even four or five years ago. I think that's one of the things we've seen kind of come out of uh, the lockdowns and how we had to start working a lot more, more remotely, figure that out. So I think that's, uh, those would be like two of the, the pieces of the wear that I would throw out there. I also think like technologists, you all are the most extroverted introverts I know. Like get a computer in front of you and like you never stop clacking on the keyboards. It's amazing. Like look at all the projects that are built. So I find it, um, I find it amazing to see like when we went virtual, like getting someone like me in a chat that's just asking silly questions, like how many cups of coffee have you had today? And then just seeing like the responses coming in and then you notice that all of a sudden questions start coming in for the panel because now you're engaged. Now you're not just like listening, like you're active and you realize there are people behind what you see on your screen. So that to me is like always funny that you guys are so extroverted online. I would like to just add, and uh, not just the online spaces, the offline spaces, like the local meetups that we can do, uh, like CD events, we do a lot of the local meetups as well, the workshops. I think that's one way you can start bringing in the local community with some face-to-face -face interaction and live workshops, which will tremendously benefit the community. Yeah, and I guess to, to add to that and to what Jeremy's saying, um, I think for the for the online, one of the benefits of the online communities is that they can be, in some cases, more inclusive. Um, especially, I mean, for for a project where you have contributors coming from different continents and different time zones, it can be really difficult to find a time where everyone can meet, even online, but in some synchronous um, conversation. So it's important to think about that and things like mailing lists. Uh, discussions um, on GitHub can really help making sure that people can engage with the project, contribute, even contribute their use cases, contribute to the, the code or to the discussion in any way. Yeah. Okay, so now I think this question is probably the most important one, maybe. I'm really definitive on that, most important, maybe. Um, but it's the why. So why is it important to support and sustain open source communities? Specifically, why should businesses and organizations consider getting involved? And you work for Fidelity, and I always say like they're champions of open source, and it's a model that is like blows my mind. So I'm going to throw it to Anisha for the why. Sure. So we believe that open source is an integral part of nearly every technology now, and it's really important for any business to start adopting the technology capabilities. So one way is to contribute and learn from this open source technologies. That is the way you can start, you know, adopting the newer technology into your space. You can, you have access to this cutting edge technologies. At the same time, you build and foster that innovation or innovative culture within the firm and collaborative culture within those communities outside the firm. You have your own community, and that's how you bring together this whole ecosystem. 
Nice. Anyone? Yeah, it's kind of hard to add to that, but <laughs> I, I totally agree. And I think the technology we, we have today, it's not possible often time to develop in isolation. No single organization could maintain that. So there's really a need for collaboration. And in doing this collaboration, going into the community, uh, supporting the community, even, you know, like running working group, uh, participating in the governance, uh, sharing use cases, everything is beneficial for the community. But that also brings, uh, that, that also helps uh, the people that goes into the community to grow because they, they take a lot from the people they interact with, they learn a lot, and this knowledge that the experience that they, they learn and they gain, they bring then into their company. So I think that's a great advantage as well. So we've all like just talked about the warm fuzzies, but let's talk about the hard cold cash. Right, so think about it. Like you join an open source community. Like again, look at the CDF or CNCF. Look at their membership. Right. Look at all the companies that are involved. Look at the money behind the companies that are behind the projects that you're using. Guess what? The people that work at the companies with the money that are behind the projects that you're using are networking with you. And what does that do? That's a relationship that you're building. And then oh, you're innovating together. And then maybe you have like. Cold, hard cash, right? Like as warm and fuzzy as we like to be when you're thinking of like a business use case, like where do you want to have a seat at the table? You want to be next to the people that like are cutting edge. And so it's, you know, how are you going to innovate if you're not there? So I think that's also like a good sort of, it's a good business use case. I think that's something that I love open source. I love being warm and fuzzy, but if I can't strategically tell my manager why it's important for them to let me do this, that's a problem because I want to do this, right? Yeah, I think for uh, to that point, I think there's uh, there are definitely advantages that when you're contributing, you're getting involved in, in the in an open source community or any community in general. It doesn't have to be an open source, but we're talking about open source. We'll go with open source. Uh, is that uh, it does put you in front of them. Um, it does give you those opportunities. I think the, the other side of that from the, the company side, if we think about the company perspective, getting involved in those communities and especially those that are using your tools or using some of the th same things you are, it is a fantastic way to, to look at a, a um, perspective people that you want to bring into your organization. Uh, we think about from a hiring perspective, being involved in open source, it's not an isolated story to have somebody that was a maintainer or just a contributor that gets hired by uh, either the company that now is, is, has been created a SaaS company out of the open source project or a company uh, that is using that uh, open source project to hire them to work on that thing or to work on something that's kind of adjacent to it. It's, it's, it happens. Uh, it is quite often. Uh, and so that is one another reason of kind of something else to the why on both sides of that is it can be a mutually beneficial uh, interaction that you can have. All right, last question and we're running late. So it's the how. So I'm just going to shout out how can you get involved and I'm going to do mine first because I'm being bullish um, is ask your manager, ask your manager for an hour. If you find a project that you really like, ask your manager if you can spend an hour of your time working on it. Again, show the value. Show, say, hey, these are the people that are currently working on this project. Do the research. If you're interested in it, you should be doing that anyway, right? Because it's your passion project. And just ask for that hour. Say, hey, can I take this hour and I'll bring this back to the team? And then who knows? Maybe they'll get another hour. Like maybe they'll give your team an hour. Maybe you'll get a hack day. Like, so just don't be afraid to ask your managers because for all the things we said, you know, that the networking and all that. I would say uh, another part of that uh, how is uh, get with a, get involved in that go to the you know maybe for instance go to github go look at their project look at uh, ways that you can get involved look at a lot of them will have the contribution here's what it takes here's the things we need look at some of the issues um, look and see you know it doesn't hurt to also pop into whatever comms channel they have and ask uh, find out who that you know maintainer some some of the different leads are in the different areas if it's a really big project find out what their needs are um, sometimes they, you know, open source or just volunteer organizations are generally aren't very good at saying, oh, we have these needs. Uh, they, they just don't. And so sometimes just make that ask, what, what can I help with? Find out what it is. Maybe it is just documentation and that's okay. 
That's not just adjust. That's an important piece of it. Maybe it's triage. Maybe it's whatever that is. But make those, ask those questions. Find out what is the the area that would help them the most is a great how. I would say within the company, start creating something called the steering groups. This is one thing which really helped us to bring several individuals who are interested together. And one thing, I know since morning, one thing is going on in my mind because of the keynote sessions especially is the security aspect to it. So it's very, very important at this time for us to strengthen the whole open source ecosystem so one thing which we started doing very recently is through these steering groups, we started organizing the security vulnerability workshop where the group of individuals come together, look into the open source projects, start identifying the vulnerabilities and fixing them. So this is one way you are not just contributing back, but you're also helping the whole community. You keep, you, you keep stealing my answers. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I wanted to reiterate that going and ask, how can I help? It's really a great way, you know, to approach a community and see for, first starting to, to help before. Uh, sometimes um, you see uh, someone coming and say, okay, we need this and we want to do this. And, you know, how can I do, how, how can I achieve my goals? But it has to be, you know, a uh, bit directional. So how can I help you? Uh, so, you, you know, you can help me. So. I think that's really key. And so I'm just going to do a quick plug. Um, on April 30th, we have a workshop, CDF workshop, and it's called If You Build It, They Will Come, Enabling a Vibrant Open Source Community. It is being done by Neil McGonigal of Fidelity. He is amazing. And so again, if you're asking for that hour, maybe invite your manager to sit with you on that workshop and just check it out and see what they say from Fidelity, a leader in the industry. I'm so like girl crush on Fidelity, I can't help it. Anyway, so that is our talk. Um, we've got uh, Anna, I think is coming up next. Nope, just kidding, because I'm doing my job so well. <laughs> so sorry. Yes, you are. Yeah, so we have a lightning talk. I knew it was a lightning yeah. talk, but it's about salsa. So Richard Boyd will be coming up next. And yeah, thank you all for uh, listening to us. All right.